So I want you to picture this. I am strapped in this awkwardly tight harness beneath my costume that is painfully digging into me. My hair is cut in a messy pixie and it's especially disheveled. And I have brown makeup wiped across my face to look like dirt. I am ready. It is time to take my maiden voyage to Neverland in front of an audience on the Egyptian theater in Park City, Utah for the first time. I trust in the techs who are operating the fly system backstage. I trust in my months of rehearsal, the lyrics, the notes, the choreography, the costumes, and everything goes off without a hitch. The pixie dust works its magic. We make it to Neverland. We live our grand adventures, have a sword fight with Captain Hook, and I deliver the children safely home to their beds in London. And the audience erupts onto their feet in energetic applause. Playing the role of Peter Pan was a dream come true for this five foot one, rough and tumble amateur gymnast. It was the perfect role for me. Such a timeless story and a magical season in my life. My firstborn daughter, Lucy, was 18 months old at the time, and she became obsessed with all things Peter Pan. She'd come to the show dressed as Tinkerbell, and for some reason, her favorite character was Captain Hook. My husband was genuinely concerned that she would grow up to only like the bad boys. That is how much she would squeal with delight when he came on stage. My role as Peter Pan was made possible and meaningful because of connections. From the relationship with my darling Lost Boys to the connection I felt with the audience and the literal connection with Daniel Simons, the talented and very capable tech director, who had me connected to the flying cable system attached to that uncomfortable harness that he would pull backstage and he would lift my entire body weight, causing me to fly. Queen B, not Beyonce, Brene Brown, <laughs> says that connection is the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. Did you hear those words? Seen, heard, and valued. Do you feel seen, heard, and valued for who you truly are? In my opinion, authentic connection with others is a commodity that holds more value than the top traded commodities in the world. And it is a commodity that we are starving for. I love the idea that the opposite of hate isn't love, it's connection. We may not believe the same things, vote for the same people, speak the same language, be the same age, but there is always something that can connect us. So tonight I wanna to show you that vulnerability as a catalyst for connection is not only possible, but essential to our well-being and to our survival. So come with me now as I take you backstage and I wipe off my makeup and I step away from the lights and the applause and I sit at my dressing room station and I look in the mirror. Little did I know that in a few short months I would be exiled from Neverland forever and I would be forced to grow up in a very real and painful way and no amount of pixie dust could ever get me back. On a beautiful spring day in May of 2008, I headed out the door with my Captain Hook loving daughter, and I remember being so proud because I had taken the time to prepare snacks for church, some animal crackers, and I sliced up a big red apple. And we made it to church, and we sat in our pew, and she was being so restless. We had to take her energetic bundle out to the foyer. It was tantrum of 2008. You may have read about it in the history books. <laughs> And when we realized she wasn't going to settle down, we decided to leave a little early. I strapped Lucy in her car seat, and then I twisted around, and I handed her a Tupperware of the thinly sliced apples. And just as I turned the key in the ignition, I could hear her choking. Quick as lightning, I exited the car, I opened her door, I unbuckled her, and I yelled for my husband, who was across the parking lot. He raced toward us, and as he began administering the Heimlich maneuver, he assured me that everything would be fine. How could it not be? And that's when her big blueberry eyes locked with mine, and a look of panic 
and confusion washed over her face. And luckily, the fire station is right next door to our church building in Park City, and I saw my husband race with Lucy in his arms, and I saw her go limp. And when he arrived, the door was locked. And I began screaming, and people flooded out from the church building. Medical professionals, doctors, nurses, the head of Summit County Search and Rescue. Someone called 911, and I laid on the cement, losing all the feeling in my limbs. And I went into shock. The paramedics did eventually arrive. The life flight helicopter landed, and they whisked my daughter away. And it was as if Daniel, who I trusted, who had been flying me across the stage, just cut that rope. And I plummeted to the stage floor in a heap of utter despair. And just when I thought I couldn't fall any further, I held my little Tinkerbell in my arms four days later in the hospital. And I laid in the bed with her, and my husband wheeled us down the hallway to the yellow line on the floor that I wasn't allowed to cross. And I handed my daughter over so they could harvest her organs. Her liver went to a six-month-old baby girl, and her kidneys went to a 35-year-old father of four. And I am intrinsically connected to these other humans in a very tangible way. And the question I get asked more than any other is, how did you survive this? First of all, it has not been pretty. And when asked to put our pain and grief into words, the only word I can think of is unspeakable. But because I had the courage to speak my unspeakable, I experienced connections deeper than I've ever known. I felt seen, I felt heard, and it gave others permission to do the same and to speak their unspeakable to me. Pain is a powerful connector. And my connection with others is truly what saved my life when my daughter lost hers. And now, because I have shared my unspeakable with you, we are all connected, and it is an honor. Another way to create connection involves your talents and gifts. I want you to picture a woman with hair about my length, but her hair is blonder, if you can imagine that, and bigger, okay, now just a little bit bigger, and then like add a bump it and some, okay, do you, do you have it? Do you picture it? Okay, this woman's name is Jenny, and Jenny is one of eight children, and five of the eight children were born with a very rare genetic disorder called Wolfram syndrome. And as the oldest child, Jenny watched as her parents cared for and buried five children. When my little Lucy was in the hospital for those four sacred and gut-wrenching days, Jenny showed up on day three with a beautiful white burial dress that she had sewn herself. It was the perfect size. She didn't ask if we wanted her to make it. We weren't even sure at that point what the outcome would be. But Jenny knew. She had done this five times. She knew exactly what to do, from the burial dress to the balloons to the flowers, the luncheon. She knew exactly what to do. One of my favorite quotes from Neil A. Maxwell, recall the star of Bethlehem. It was in its exact, precise orbit long before it shone. We are likewise placed in human orbits to illuminate. Jenny was placed in a precise orbit to illuminate me in my darkness of despair. She was in my life at the exact time I needed her. And all of the gifts that Jenny had acquired throughout her life, her sewing, her empathy, there's nothing this woman can't do. She built her own house. They were all given as gifts to me. And we are now intrinsically connected. I want you to think about your gifts and how you can use them to be a gift to others. Not only 
Did Jenny sew that burial dress for our Lucy? She saved part of the fabric. Just in case I might have another little girl someday so that she could sew a blessing dress for her. And as for her hair, I figured out why she has to do it so big and so blonde. It's because she has to hide her halo. Use your gifts to be a gift. We all have incredible stories and experiences that will forge connections. It's been 10 years, 11 years since Lucy died and I still can't fly, but I am starting to dance again, which brings me to my third point and another way we can create connection. Like most of us, I was in my kitchen dancing, filming myself and immediately posting it to Instagram. We've all been there. Um, I was just being myself. And a few minutes after I posted it, I got this message from a college friend I used to perform with named Janique. And she said, you are so dumb and silly. And my kids and I are sitting around on the couch watching you. You're a fool. And we're getting such a kick out of it. And I'm like, oh, stop. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was so surprised that just by being my goofy self, I was creating this moment for her and her kids. So I had an idea. I'm gonna do another dance. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody. And I'm gonna tag her in it. And I'm gonna tell her it's dedicated to her and her kids. So I did it. And she messaged me again and was like, we love it. They, they thought they were so cool and special and we saw you being dumb again. And, <laughs> but she unleashed a beast because it gave me the idea to take this silly dancing in my kitchen to another level. So I told all my Instagram followers to message me something positive that happened to them that week, and I would dedicate a dance to them in my Instagram stories. <laughs> and thus, Positive Pants Dance was born. <laughs> so every Thursday, I have a virtual dance party and I celebrate all the positive things happening around the world. And I get so many requests. People love watching my crazy nonsense and listening to the upbeat music. And they love reading about a stranger in Oklahoma who just beat breast cancer or a guy in Colorado who just got a job offer or a mom who changed her last diaper after a long potty training battle. And all of this just because I decided to be myself for the world to see. And I have never regretted being myself. We can only connect to what is real. It's such a miracle that I can dance again, isn't it? And that I can feel joy again, that we're all connected in so many ways. So my hope tonight is that if you are silently suffering, you will use these tools in order to gain the commodity that can heal our hearts and our homes. Speak the unspeakable. To someone, please, use your gifts to be a gift. And don't try to prove yourself. Just try to be yourself. After our little Tinkerbell left us for Neverland and we came home from the hospital to an empty house, we found the courage to have two more children. Zoe, who you saw earlier with Jenny as a baby, and our son, Peter. And I may jokingly call myself the riffraff of Park City because we don't drive a Tesla. <laughs> and my kids thought that our Toyota minivan was a Tesla. <laughs> Who am I to correct them? <laughs> um, and <sighs> my flights to the grocery store and basketball practice certainly don't end in standing ovations. But I consider myself wealthy beyond compare because I am so rich in the commodity of connection. Thank you. <laughs>